the Queen Mary, once a symbol of luxury and elegance, now conceals a darker history beneath its glamour, one filled with tragedy and lingering spirits. With every step, you can feel the weight of history pressing down and the chill of the unknown creeping closer. Take, for instance, the spirit of a little girl named Jackie, set to wander the ship's pool decks. Many have reported her playful presence. Guests have felt her small hand tugging at their clothes or heard her laughter <laughs> echoing in the night. In one notable encounter, the late psychic Peter James communicated with her spirit, capturing her voice in a chilling exchange. Jackie began to speak audibly, verbally, where, where you could hear him and I could hear him and the whole world was able to hear her speak, verbally, audibly. Let me help you. Okay, talk to me again. I don't want to go away unless you know we're here with love. I'm here to help you. Yes, you can find your mommy too. Your mommy loves you too like we do. We're here with love and light for you. Talk to me. You don't have to stay here. You don't have to stay here. Yes, you can do that too if you want to. Mommy loves you too. Won't you let me hold your hand? London Bridge is falling down. Can you sing with me? Sing with me, hello? Sarah. Can you sing with me? I want to go back then, I want to go back. Listen. Yes! I want to look. I'm looking. Talk to me, Jackie. Let me help you. But little Jackie isn't the only one who roams these decks. Many hotel guests have reported waking up to find their blankets pulled off or experiencing strange occurrences during their stay. With approximately 55 reported deaths on the ship, we can only speculate about the lingering souls that may still inhabit these haunted halls. So what better way to share the spookiest stories that some of you have shared with me than right here on the infamous Queen Mary. Grab your snacks, grab your cobija, and settle in as we dive into some spine-chilling stories. Hey Daisy, I recently started to watch your videos. I'm a mechanic and hear your videos throughout my day. And let me say, sometimes I don't even want to use the restroom because they leave me spooked. I'm reaching out because I have a story of my own. Something very paranormal that happened to me when I was 11. I'm from Colorado. My mother was a single mother of six kids. I was the fifth. She later divorced my biological father, so it was just myself, my third brother, and my little brother. Fast forward a couple of hard years. My mom started dating a guy that we'll call Javi. When they told us about it, I wasn't too fond of the guy. He just gave me a weird energy. As we got to know him, I found out he wasn't religious, which was strange because my mom was very, very religious. Later in their relationship, we started staying over at Javi's place. I had my own room and so did my older brother. My little brother, usually slept with me or with my older brother. But one thing I will never forget is the first night we ever stayed at his house. The day went on as usual, but by nightfall, when we entered his house, the energy felt so heavy. It was like there was a huge mass hovering over me. I immediately felt that something was off. 
Javi and my mom showed us to our rooms and my little brother decided to sleep with me. I didn't mind because I felt really uncomfortable sleeping alone with the strange energy in the house. And thanks to a nightlight in the middle of the room, we fell asleep not long after getting into bed. I woke up suddenly feeling very thirsty, which was weird because I've never been one to wake up thirsty, not even to this day. I was facing the wall, so I turned over, rubbing my eyes, still half asleep. I glanced at my little brother, who was still sound asleep, and fixed his blanket. As I reached for the blanket, I noticed something. On the wall, there was this dark mass. The floor looked normal, but this shadow was creeping up the wall. I stared at it for a while without looking up. Suddenly, the room got very cold. Goosebumps ran up my back and neck. I closed my eyes and pulled my little brother closer to my chest with him facing me and started praying El Padre Nuestro. As I was praying, I felt a heavy hand at the foot of the bed, slowly sinking down as if someone was creeping up on us. My heart pounded and I began to breathe heavily. This woke up my little brother and I used that moment to calmly tell whatever was in the room to go away, that it was not welcome. I said it in a normal, steady tone. My little brother looked at me confused. I felt the hand slowly lift away, and I told my brother I was just having a bad dream. The next morning, I told my mom I didn't like sleeping in that room and explained what happened. But of course, she brushed it off as just a nightmare. That morning, I noticed Javi had tattoos, and one of them was a the number 999. But when he moved, the number flipped, revealing 666. My stomach dropped. You'd think my mom would have left him after that, but no. What happened that night repeated almost every night after, and though I never looked up, the dark presence seemed to get closer each time. Eventually, we moved into Javi's house, and the room I stayed in became my permanent room. That's when things became more active. Javi started working night shifts, coming home around 1 or 3 in the morning. My mom would always stay up waiting for him. Around this time, she began acting very abusive towards us. She usually disciplined us with the belt or the hand. But now, it became more frequent and over little things. Her whole demeanor had changed. We had argued one night, and she had given me the belt and the TV wire. I spent the whole day in my room. That night, I was alone for the first time as my little brother slept with my other brother. I fell asleep around 8 p.m., but I had a nightmare of my mom hitting me again. I woke up drenched in cold sweat and my room was freezing. I sat up, covered my eyes with the blanket, trying to shake off the dream. When I removed the blanket and looked around, the nightlight went off. I cursed under my breath, thinking it was just the batteries. But as I looked around my room, the familiar chills returned. And then I saw it, the dark mass but it wasn't in its usual spot. This time, I saw it directly in front of me. I squinted, trying to make sense of what I was seeing. It was like something was there, but I couldn't see through it. Only, it was blurry. Slowly, I looked up, and about three feet away was a huge black figure. I usually kept my eyes down, but this time, I couldn't stop myself from looking up. My eyes met its red, glowing eyes. I was paralyzed. Couldn't move, couldn't scream, couldn't even blink. The mask started whispering to me, but I couldn't understand what it was saying. All I heard was, Ya los tengo. Tears welled up in my eyes, and when I finally blinked, the figure was gone. My nightlight was back on. I ran out of the room and into my brother's room, crying and shaking. I wanted to run to my mom, but I was scared she'd hit me again. And that wasn't even the worst of it. It was just the beginning. My mom and Javi had sat us down to have a serious talk. 
my mom had told us she was pregnant and that we were going to have a sister. I didn't love the idea. I didn't like it one bit because something about Javi just made me feel like he was bad. That he had attached himself to whatever was in the house. We started sleeping in the master bedroom while they remodeled my room. My little brother and I slept on the floor about 10 feet from their bed. I don't remember much of what happened next because I was sound asleep, but my mom told us the story later. She said she was having a pleasant dream where she was at a baby shower with all of us and Javi. Everyone was celebrating her pregnancy. Then an old friend of hers who was a bruja approached her in the dream and warned, be careful. He wants to hurt her. My mom felt uneasy and then her aunt came up, placing a hand on her stomach. The aunt's eyes suddenly turned red, glowing red, and her cold hand started rubbing my mom's stomach. She felt pain, as if she was giving birth at that very moment. She woke up unable to move and started crying, trying to call out to Javi. When she glanced at him, she saw him floating above the bed with the dark mass carrying him but not touching him. My mom said she passed out after that. When she woke up, she felt sick, rushed to the bathroom, and found she was miscarrying. She saw the baby, just 14 weeks old. When Javi finally woke up, he had three long scratches on his back and over his 999 tattoo. There was a cut marking each and every number as if they were crossed out. After that, my mom's friend called a priest and a nun who came to bless the house. But this made my mom furious. My mom smiled eerily and laughed each time they mentioned Padre, Jesus, or God. Javi did the same but he just stared at the nun, smiling in a sinister way. The priest and the nun noticed this and called for another priest to perform an exorcism. I watched in horror as my mom laughed, not her usual laugh, but a demonic one, and Javi joined in. I grabbed my little brother and ran upstairs as he cried and asked, why were they speaking like that, saying it wasn't our mom? After the exorcism, things calmed down, and we didn't stay long in that house. We eventually sold it to a Native American family. When we later spoke to them, they said they took it out right when they walked in. They also told my mom, I'm sorry for your loss, which creeped me out. But at least we were finally out of the house for good. My brother later admitted he had also seen the dark figure, but it never scared him. My older brother, little brother, and I managed to protect him from seeing anything too terrifying until the night of the exorcism. Hi Daisy, my name is Yareli, and this story happened to my dad when he was 16. My dad had gone to a party late at night in Guadalupe, Victoria, Mexico. He stayed out until about 1, 2 in the morning, and by then, he was feeling tired and decided to head back home. The walk to my grandparents' house wasn't too far, but on foot, it could feel terribly slow, which is exactly how my dad was making his way back. The walk took about 10, 15 minutes, and my dad said there weren't any issues until he arrived home. When he walked in the front door, he saw my grandparents' visibly distraught. He was both worried and confused about why they were so shaken. My grandpa was overwhelmed with fear. When my dad asked what happened while he was gone, his parents exchanged a look as if deciding whether to say anything, but eventually they did. My grandparents explained that they had been sleeping, but my grandpa, who was lightly sleeping, suddenly had the urge to wake up. He didn't feel that anything was wrong, but he couldn't shake the feeling that he needed to look around. He briefly checked the house and found nothing out of place. The last place he checked was the kitchen. In the kitchen, 
there was a window that looked out to the side of the house where a back road ran. What he saw outside this window gave him chills. In the distance, he saw a black, cloudy smoke descending down the street, coming toward the direction of the house. As he was watching, he also heard the distant cries of, I miss hijos. My grandpa couldn't move. He was paralyzed with fear. Somehow, he snapped out of it and went to wake up my grandma. He told her what he saw, and she was also very scared. As they were talking about what had happened, my dad walked right in the door where he saw his parents. The scariest part of this story is that the time from when my grandpa saw this black smoke to when he woke my grandma and my dad walked in was maybe about five minutes. When my grandpa asked how my dad got home, he said he had walked through the street. The same street where my grandpa saw and heard La Llorona. Whatever entity messed with my grandpa that night, I hope I will never encounter it. Hi Daisy. As soon as I saw the title, The Hat Man, for your latest video, I just instantly started typing my own encounters with it. I'm 33 now, but all my encounters with the hat man happened when I was 17. My mom and I had moved back to Colorado while our new home was being built. We stayed with my grandparents for about three months. Their house always felt ominous for some unknown reason. My cousins and I even talked about how uncomfortable it was there. During our stay, my mom and I shared the guest bedroom. We alternated between the bed and a makeshift bed on the floor. Many of my experiences with the hat man began on the nights I was on the floor. Every encounter occurred while I was wide awake, just getting into bed or about to fall asleep. So these were not due to sleep paralysis. I remember the first night vividly. I had just tucked myself into the makeshift bed on the floor while my mom had already fallen asleep. As soon as I settled, I felt a distinct male energy in the room, as if someone was staring directly at me. The gaze felt heavy and very eerie, but not threatening per se. To put it more clearly, I didn't feel as though my life was in danger from this entity, but it definitely did not feel safe at all. The feeling was distinct and undeniable. However, I've always been a horror kid and told myself I had been watching too many scary movies or reading too many fantasy books and the feeling of being watched was just my imagination. I closed my eyes trying to sleep, but the feeling of being watched intensified. I felt as though a man was standing by my feet, towering over me. I began to feel anxious and the room seemed darker. An image started forming in my mind, a tall, broad-shouldered man wearing a long coat and a hat. I didn't know anyone who wore such attire, like hats or particularly long coats. And there was no connection to the image or energy of the figure in my life. Still, I kept finding excuses to jot this all up to nothing, even though it creeped the hell out of me. I forgot to mention that at this age, I was very skeptical. I had previous encounters that were deemed paranormal and unexplainable. But it was easier to convince myself that paranormal things didn't exist rather than to live in the vulnerability of it. After that first encounter, the same experience happened several times on random nights when I was on the floor. Each time, the room would grow darker and I would feel the heavy gaze of a man's presence at my feet. The image of a shadowy figure with a broad-shouldered silhouette in a long coat and hat would fill my mind. The more this happened, the more I started losing the belief it was just my imagination. Especially since I could not find any logical explanations. I recall that on these nights, 
I had no memorable dreams. On the last night at my grandparents' house, my mom stayed at the new house, so I had the guest room and bed to myself. As I climbed into bed that evening, I saw the hat man for a brief moment. He was standing by the window about a foot away from my bed. I jumped and he was gone, but I could still feel his presence. I tried to convince myself that I had just imagined seeing him and attempted to sleep, but once again, I felt him standing at my feet, watching me. Now, fast forward many years later, around the age of 26, 27, I had pushed these experiences to the back of my mind, convincing myself it was all just my imagination. I had never told anyone about it, fearing they would think I was crazy or not getting enough sleep. I did over time become more open to the paranormal because of different experiences and became obsessed with scary ghost stories on YouTube. So one day, I was checking out a scary story narrator's channel when I saw a video for stories about the hat man. All of my old memories resurfaced and I was shocked to find that others had experienced similar encounters. There were a total of six stories and every single one was extremely identical to my own and all had one thing in common. Every other person's age was between six to 15 years old, meaning everyone, including myself, was under 18 when they were visited by the hat man. One day, I shared my experiences with Tim, a friend from Canada who is about seven years older than me. Although Tim didn't believe in the paranormal, he was open to hearing about it. To my surprise, he was startled and said, I think I've seen him too. He began to explain that when he was 10 years old, he had just been tugged into bed and was about to close his eyes when all of a sudden, a dark shadow of a man wearing a hat appeared, standing at the foot of his bed, watching him. His mom entered his room, but there was no man. Tim explained what he saw, but his mom didn't believe him and attributed it to the bad weather outside. So, up until I explained to him what I went through, he also believed the hat man was just his imagination. What are the odds, though, out of all of the people to me on the internet and from a different country, it was someone else who also saw the hat man? I've since shared my experiences of the hat man with other friends who believe in the paranormal since learning about the phenomenon. So far, no one else I've talked to has claimed to have seen him. So that was it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you to everyone that wrote in their spooky stories. As I was reading, everything felt fine. Honestly, I didn't get any spooky vibes. But maybe I just didn't pick up on something that you guys will. So let me know in the comments down below, okay? But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope to see you guys all in my next one. Bye!